Hi everyone, my name is Tom Van Norman. I'm a director of engineering services at Dragos. Uh, we're going to talk about a SOC today. It's a SOC in the, the ICS village that, that we have. Uh, going to be re really, uh, I'm going to speed through the things here pretty quick because we have to uh, close up and get out of here and break down because we're having an arcade party tonight next door in our village. If you come back at 1030, we've got some really cool uh, retro arcade, arcade games uh, that we are setting up and, and uh, going to have 1030, 230. So... Uh, I said, a sock in the village is, a, is my talk. Uh, very high level. If we have questions afterwards, by all means, come next door and we'll, uh, we'll run through things with you. Uh, so, so what we're going to do, we have an introduction uh, to, a, to an ICS sock. Unfortunately, we're not going to do a demonstration because we have to break down everything at 6 o'clock. So by the time we get done here, everything will be turned off. Uh, and then understanding, understanding the effects of, in, of attacks on ICS systems. So what is an OT security operation or security operations center anyway? And do you really need them? And that, that question comes up all the time. Uh, and you know, some people say you do, some people you don't, but what are they? Are they anomaly detection solutions? And next door we have, uh, you know, we have Nozomi over there, we have Clarity over there, we have Security Matters over there, uh, CyberX, uh, you know, all those fantastic products they have, uh, but is that really your, what your SOC looks like? Uh, is it a SIM? We have a SIM by Gravwell over there, an OT SIM. Is that your SOC? An IDS. Uh, we, we had a security onion running over there, but we replaced it with, with some other things. Where is it? Right here. Uh, the, 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 the Pew Pew maps. Or are they really, you know, unicorns? Uh, well, they really do exist. Who has them? Well, many, many Fortune 100 companies have them. Uh, operate OT socks today. They are becoming more and more common, uh, whether it's uh, through an MSP or or on site. But we are seeing a lot more of that data pushed up from the up, from the from the plant floor up into socks for for monitoring. Uh, depending on, on the size of your company, you might have multiple socks. Global companies, uh, you, you'll have. Issues with, with data leaving the country or, or leaving that area and privacy and everything else. So you might have multiple socks depending on, on where you're at and how you're operating. And of course, you know, some of them are, are, are outsourced. Some are done in-house. So a sock is a combination of people, processes, and technologies that proactively search for ab abnormalities in the environment to identify and respond to security incidents. So you can read just like me, but I decided to read that. So what, what, what exactly are we talking about? Well, the people part, uh, what it is not, you never throw people uh, at a problem to, to fix it. That, that does not work. You know, we've seen that time and time and time again that you, know, you, you have a problem, so let's just hire a bunch of people. Uh, well, that doesn't really, really work. Uh, what, what you need are good people, various skill levels, but they have unique talents. And uh, we can go over the, the talents a after this here. You must have the three tiers. So you know, you, you're, you're tier one uh, people. All your analysts are, are going to look through through your logs, your, your alerts, your, uh, your different events day after day and, and say, hey, you know, this does not, does not look right. Uh, you'll have the most people in that group. Your tier two are your incident responders. Uh, so your tier one, of course, is going to push it up to tier two. The tier two are going to go out. Uh, say in, in, incident, incident responders, see, see what exactly uh, is, is going on there. Uh, you know, they, they, they perform the, the triage. They're going to dig, dig a little bit deeper into everything apply the appropriate mitigations. Now, tier three is where we really get into uh, the uniqueness here. Tier one and tier two is the same between you know all the, uh, all the different socks. But when we get into tier three for an OT, these are the people that are closest to the process. So you have, a, you have, a, you have something going on. You, you find some sort of malware. Uh, unlike your conventional 
IT systems, uh, you know, you're going to look at your, your web servers, your email servers, and, and things like that. That's pretty standard across the board stuff. OT, though, you need somebody to understand those controllers. You need somebody to understand the system and processes, how they, how they work. So, you know, if there's a chemical process, what's going on in that chemical process? What impact does this have? An IT guy's not going to know that at all. Uh, you need a process engineer, you need, you need somebody that really understands the process. What does that controller do? What, what is the impact of that? Uh, that is the uh, biggest part, or the big, biggest difference to here. Also, when, when you do your investigation, it can't be left with, hey, I don't know what happened. Uh, you know, we, we have to identify what exactly did happen. You know, it, it, if we went through tier one and tier two, Obviously, something happened. Tier three, just can't write it off. Uh, you have to rule it out, rule everything out. Process part, <clears throat> documentation and procedures are a must. Uh, that's so you, you get a standard investigation every single time. Document everything that happens. Uh, again, can't stress the, the documentation part. A lot of people, including myself, really cannot stand documentation. However, when you do this, you have to document every single thing. Look at the big picture when you're done. Follow the same procedure every time. Uh, if one doesn't exist, make it up. You know, we, it doesn't have to be a, a real super detailed procedure, but you have to follow the same steps every time to get a similar outcome. Technology part, there is no silver bullet. I work for a vendor. You know, Dragos, we, we make a threat hunting platform. I'm the first one to say, and you know, everybody else in companies will say, there is no silver bullet. Uh, firewalls, you know, we, we, not the answer. Your anomaly detection units are not the answer. There is no one silver bullet. Any vendor that tells you that and just trying to sell you something. Uh, one, of the, one of the problems that, that here in the ICS village that we hear all the time, uh, every single event we go to is network visibility. I have no idea what my assets are. I have no idea what's on my network. I, how do I do it? Where do I get it? Uh, the list goes on and on and on. You, know, you, you talk about spam ports, and uh, s sometimes you can't get spam ports. It, you know, the managed switch is three layers up. Down below in the cabinets, there's unmanaged switches. How, how, do you, how, how do you bring that data back up? Network visibility is a, uh, it, it is a problem. You know, do you want to do active scanning? Do, do you want to keep it all passive? Uh, it's, it's not an easy problem, and every solution uh, can be different. Software-defined networking is a uh, is an alternative to it. There, there are a couple uh, couple vendors out there doing software-defined networking for OT networks. If you're not familiar with it, I'm saying you can get with me afterwards. I'll I'll talk to you a little bit. Uh, previous life, that's what I did for OT networks. Very interesting uh, technology that's out now. So. You got all your spam ports. You, you're, you're mirroring your data. You're spanning your data. Uh, what, what, do you, what do you do with it? You know, again, you, you could have hundreds of megs of, of data. Uh, you can have gigs of data, depending on how, how you spend everything. What are you doing it to now? You input it to a threat detection system. And input it to a uh, a sim. You know, there, there, there are several tools that you you import it to, but import it. Save that data. Uh, find it. Find a tool that works best for you. Fits your budget. Fits your needs. <clears throat> so another problem is correlation of data from multiple systems. Uh, so what, what do we mean? What do we mean by that? Uh, I'll, I'll have, you know, my my historian. I'll have my my one asset detection tool. I'll have an anomaly detection tool. I have. You know, all of these detection tools, if I put them up on my, my screen, all these dashboards, I can't read it. It's really, at that point, worthless because there's just too much data. Integrate into a SIM. Uh, only show the, the information that you that you really want. So uh, over here in, uh, in, the, in the ICS Village, we have that problem. You know, we're running multiple platforms. Uh, so for DEF CON here, we, we got Gravwell, who makes a SIM. And we fed all of them in here, and we, we made up a dashboard that had zoning, clarity, and uh, asset uh, management, everything up on, on the one on the one dashboard. 
And there's, there's many some solutions out there now. Important takeaway, 100% uh, of detection should be either false positive, should be a false positive or, or result in a, uh, in, in a finding. Uh, that, that's a, a very important thing. You know, you get to, like I said before, you get to tier three. These are the people that are, are really hunting down the problem, talking to control system engineers, maybe the art control systems engineers. You really need to find the, the root cause of, of that problem. Uh, it may not be easy. It might be a rootkit on your on your PLC. It might be malware. It might be something else. But uh, it is a challenge. So there are many options for running a SOC. Uh, it could be MS, MSSP, in-house, or a hybrid. So a couple of things that, that, that I've seen was, uh, you know, your tier one and tier two are MSSPs. You, know, you push them up. There's, again, many, many of those. Uh, and then your tier three, since they have to be that highly specialized, Work with either your control engineer or work with closely with your control engineer. Maybe they're an in-house employee, but a uh, tier one and two, tier one and two outsourced uh, might might work pretty good. More data is the better for when you talk about socks. Give it as much data as you can, so you can go back and correlate. You can track things back. Technology is never a replacement for people. Uh, just like you can't throw people at a problem and expect the problem to be fixed, you can't replace people for technology. Technology is a, a fantastic thing to give you, give you that data, uh, present the data in many different ways, but you still need that human to go and look through it, especially when we're talking about that control system network where it can do funny things. You know, with, with, that, with that control system network, we're dealing with three things uh, that can go you know, bad. It's health, life, and safety when things go bad. Uh, you know, your machine's not going to pick that up, but your person will. <clears throat> so there's a couple of things that we're doing over here in the ISS village. Uh, we, we, we built an area where you can interact with SMEs and, and discuss many different topics, uh, IT and OT topics. Uh, CTF just, just finished uh, while I was waiting to get up here. Uh, I have to say the Team Dragos won that. And, uh, you know, you avoid the sales pitch and see how things actually work. Get the proof of concept. Don't let the vendors come in and say, hey, you know, we got this wonderful thing for you. It's going to solve everything. Great. Put it in my network. Let it run for 30, 60, 90 days, 180 days. Wh whatever you can negotiate for your proof of concept. It might cost you a few bucks. might get it for free. Every vendor is different. But uh, do that proof of concept. Just don't buy it because the salesman said to buy it. And I f flew through them talk pretty quick. Uh, that's who I am. If you have any questions, by all means, come up to me later. Uh, gladly talk to you about this or any other topic. Thank you.